Hello fellow pickers and stuff lovers. You're back here with us at Alice Ops. It's December and everybody is going crazy. We're busy, stuff is happening. And we really wanted to share with you what happened when we went to an estate sale last week. Um, last weekend there was an estate sale. We never know in advance how it's going to be, but this one was spectacular. Um, it wasn't necessarily that we picked up things that will bring us millions of dollars, but it was um, it was fun. The things we found were varied and interesting and vintage. Um, I will tell you as we go along what happened. Uh, so, first of all, my husband picked up some things on his side he kind of he went to the basement I went upstairs uh, we looked for stuff that we cared about he found I believe that it's six pieces of Revere wear and of course that's the stuff with the great copper bottom uh, I don't believe it's made anymore and for six pieces some of them brand new uh, he paid $40 which I think is a very good deal. So just a little bit of an idea of this beautiful set of pans. He got a double boiler and a, a big pot as well. And so that was a very good idea to pick that up. Then he also bought a pressure cooker. It's a Presto pressure cooker. Never used, still in the box, still in its papers for $10. And those can sell for upwards of $50, $60, especially new, you know, that should help. So that was another good buy. Um, and uh, I can think of that. And of course, also a projector, which I believe was 50? I can't remember now. 30! 30. 30! The magic number appeared in the air on the fingers of my husband behind the camera. So 30, $30 for the projector, which also sometimes can sell for good money, you know, maybe 60, maybe 80, maybe a little less, but should, should do okay. Uh, so we're always happy to find those. Um, and one of the great things about this sale was that, you know, sometimes I feel like an estate sale, you get there, you wait at the door, you wait until it's the right time, they're going to let you in. It's a little bit of a deal. And sometimes it's as though people are a bit guarded and they're not sure how they should be behaving with you. It was just friendly. It was by estate sale runners, not the family itself, but they were still very friendly and welcoming and just said, okay, we're going to go in, give us two minutes, we'll turn on all the lights and then you can come in. You know, not, oh, it's not 8.30, you can't come in because the house will explode. Sometimes it's really like that. They're like, we said we'd start at 8.30. You know, it's like, well, big deal. You know, you've got some people here and it's 8.20 open the GD door, you know. Uh, so it was nice. It was friendly. They just told us, go and dig. Uh, everything's for sale. You can have a look through boxes and all sorts of things. So meanwhile, upstairs, I had a look around and immediately this caught my eye. And this is an atomizer perfume bottle where you would have uh, a pump, like a plastic thing here that you would pump the, the perfume and spray it. Um, this I find is very Art Deco-like because of the uh, uh, geometric sculptural effect, uh, this pedestal here. But I'm not absolutely sure it's from the 20s or 30s. I would kind of date it around that because of that style, um, also because of the atomizer. Uh, so something like that. So I asked the, the woman who was in charge of the sale, 
how much for that? And sometimes people who run the sale can be irritating because everything's expensive and they don't want to budge and it can be complicated. She was really easy to deal with. She wasn't giving anything away, but she said, hold on, if you're interested in this, you may be interested in this as well. Um, I have to admit, I'm not exactly sure what it is. We thought because it has a wick, perhaps maybe it was a lighter, but I'm also thinking it might be a diffuser, like you would put perfume and this has a wick to release the perfume. I'm not sure, but I thought, well, so yeah, maybe. Um, and then she presented me with this basket and she said, you can have all of what's in this basket, which holds a lot of perfume bottles and bits for $30. So I started thinking quickly, um, $30, I don't know if I want to pay $30, some of those bottles are empty. Uh, uh, so I had to look through and found that one of the things in this basket was a Chanel number no. five, which sometimes can go for good money, even if it's half of the bottle, even if the perfume is old. Collectors can really go for these things. So then I started thinking, well, five for this, five for that, five for that, that'd be 15. And then she says, well, what about 25 for everything? I thought, well, what am I, stupid? I won't go for all of this for 10 bucks. Might as well, 25, fine. This was the beginning of a beautiful relationship because I ended up paying $25 for the contents of the basket, these two things, $40 for this oil lamp with the Scotty dogs around it. I have the chimney downstairs, but I didn't want to put that all together because um, it can be fragile. And a set of four cream soup cups from Minton, made in England. Two of them have some flaws to them. One of them has a crack towards the bottom, but still they're, they're very decorative. And you know, these were $20 for the four. Um, so that was okay. And then a whole lot of stuff that I will show you. Um, basically 25 bucks for that, $40 for the oil lamp, $20 for these and when I showed her everything I had she said well how about 90 I said 80 and she said 85 I said that's fine and I realized that that meant everything else I had thrown into my basket was free I will show you what was in the basket in the rest of the basket fat a perfume by Molineux, made in France, in its presentation box. Not worth tons, but certainly worth at least 25 bucks, maybe a little more. This is a large box <laughs> for a large bottle. There isn't much left, but it is that wonderful same perfume by Molineux, France. Just a very collectible thing, a feminine look. Just beautiful in a dressing table and a collection of bottles. That was free. This was free. Uh, it's a shower gel, but it's by Metzis. Uh, Paris made in France. I'll take anything that is free or a dollar made in France. That usually is a good idea. Shortwave radio uh, by Grunding. May be 20 to 30 dollars. It's a great buy when it's free. A 
antique, religious metal. Um, just really speaks of a, a time and of, um, you know, so, something that um, would appeal to people who collect religious artifacts. Um, it really speaks of that time in, in the church. Um, it's a metal, it's also marked, it's not any precious metal, but it's marked by the maker. So that'll be interesting to research and sell. Uh, I know some people are really into their religious uh, collectibles, so that's a good thing. Again, that was free. Nuance, perfume by Coty. That's not really worth much, but it's a gift set. I have this perfume. Um, all in all, you know, maybe $15 or whatever. It was free. Also free, Edwardian to the 1920s. Oh, wait, I guess I can do the research and find out from when it really is because there's uh, some markings on the bottle and it also says sterling on the cap. So beautiful silver capped Edwardian bottle that I can't open. Don't ask me to open it. I can't open it. I tried. I used to be able to open it. Anyways, um, it's in really good condition. It's all cut glass. Just for the glass, I, I love it. That was free. Beautiful antique cut glass. Probably a mustard, because here is where you would put the spoon. Not only is it marked, but it's hallmarked with British hallmarks. It's silver topped, and that was free. And you see, the reason I picked up this, I saw it across the table, and I just thought, that's quality. It's just the way it's cut. You can see there's a, a lot of brilliance in the cut. It's sharply cut. That means it's hand cut. Um, it was in fairly good condition. There's a chip or two here. That doesn't bother me because it's antique. I had no idea that this was silver until I got it home because I didn't buy it for that. I bought it because I thought this is charming to me. It has a lot of style, I love the shape, and I can tell it's well made. So sometimes rely on that when you're buying, you know, when you're forming your eye, when you're looking at a bunch of stuff going, how do I know what's good? You know, it, it's not necessarily, you know, what you like. Yes, I mean, it can be that, but it's also, you know, does this seem like a beautifully made thing, something made with attention or precision? You know, I'm looking at this sharply cut glass. I'm like, this was, someone did this with precision. And the, the design, you can tell someone thought of this. So um, what was also a surprise was that when we got this home, this is hallmarked as well, and this as well. So this is silver and so is this. Not silver plate, but actual silver. Which, again, it's not because it will necessarily give the piece that much more monetary value, but someone who's reading that description might otherwise say, oh, that's a nice glass thing. But they're reading, hey, this is solid silver. This adds value in terms of it's a good quality thing. Someone thought enough of it when they were making it to make this part in silver. So it means that this is serious stuff. This is well made. So it gives them confidence and added interest in, in your item sometimes. That was free. Uh, this was free. I just think it's adorable because you can click the date. And um, nice 60s pop art, mid-century stuff. People go for that because it's fun. 
I think that's about it for the stuff that was free. Um, so I claimed all of it in the name of Pickers Everywhere. And I'll show you what was in the little basket as well. I've already sold three bottles from this basket. They were all three Chanel bottles, all in glass. Um, they were vintage, but they were completely empty. And I sold the three for $15 plus shipping. So already there, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I've got two of these. This is plastic, unfortunately, but may still be collectible. I have Nuance by Coty, but that's the oil, the body oil. I have these sweet little, maybe 1940s jars, which are just very displayable. And uh, here's some more Chanel. They're really atomizers. You're supposed to put perfume in there. Smells like perfume. And then use it, you know, put it in your handbag, basically. They've got the Chanel logo. And there's two of these. I don't really think you're going to make any money on that, but whatever. Uh, this is all um, kind of... Uh, Lao Tzu Tan, Nina Ricci, that sort of thing. And uh, some of this design um, was stylized after Lalique. So some collectors might be interested in that style. Uh, that was that. And then uh, we stayed around for a bit. We had a second, a third, a seventh look. We saw this nice shaker with its beautiful swirl. And that was about two bucks, 250. So we got that as well. This is a dry measure, which has a great look again. Um, even just decorative, it's great. Or you could put your spoons in it and plunk it down on the table, right? probably from the 40s, 50s, and it's British um, measures. They go for around maybe 12 to $15 on eBay. We got it for about two bucks. And then, oh yes, and this. This is a, um, I'll tell you exactly what it's called. It's called Rituali Romanum. And that is Latin. Uh, it's the, the rituals that uh, the, the priest in the Catholic Church will use uh, for, for certain events, like a wedding or for mass. Or, um, it's completely written in Latin. I took three years of Latin at school. That's a long time. Curious story about that. I took two years of Latin in high school and then... At the end of the two years, they said, well, certain people will be taking Latin next year and some of you won't. And I thought, oh, good, because I did not too bad. You know, I thought I might be exempt from taking the next year. No, those of you who had, I don't know, 75% average and up, you will be allowed to take Latin again next year. Okay, the third year, like, completely lost me. It's like, there is a limit. There's a limit to the use of Latin. <laughs> I just, no. Um, but it, it's the first year or so, it was interesting. Anyways, um, we saw some very much like this. It's in good condition, gilded edges um, that were going for over $100. I don't know, but, you know, must have been like two bucks, basically. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then while we were looking around some more, my husband saw some magazines that were very interesting. I have to say, I, I saw those as well. And um, I kind of thought, oh, maybe I'll just get one for us to look through and, and learn. They have interesting articles, beautiful pictures. And then he sees there's a lot of them. And he did a little bit of research. And uh, we saw that... Um, 
pretty consistently they sold for five dollars each more or less well um there were over 120, maybe 130, and they let us have them for $40. And we thought that's a good deal because it may take a little time, but you know, I think that's fun selling bundles maybe or uh, three or four at a time and making a little money little by little. Um, let me tell you that these magazines are heavy and we took several trips. Um, between the house and the car with the magazines and the boxes and the so much stronger now and uh, and then we took the magazines from the car to the house and we have stairs to go upstairs to the bedrooms and the place where we've got the magazines thankfully not in our bedroom but anyways um, that was exhausting but so much fun because I just think that's a great buy. I'm really happy about that. Oh, one last thing for I completely forget is this clippy thing, which has hands, um, like Victorian style hands um, that are clips that it's all in brass and they will hold your menus, your business cards. I just said it's a delightful thing. Uh, and that was free as well. And one last note before we let you go. We seem to have hit 1,000 subscribers. And I don't know how because, you know, I just ramble on at you and I just enthuse about things we got that I'm really happy about and I want to share with you. And I'm always happy to read your comments. We both are. Thank you so much for caring, for listening, for spending time with us, and for being stuff lovers. So thank you, thank you. If you haven't done so, by all means, subscribe. Uh, I hope that you continue to have fun with our videos. And uh, we'll see you in the very near future. And up until then, have very happy pre-holidays. And we'll talk to you soon.